Hi again. Hi. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I hope you are doing great. Thank you for being here this week. And thank you for being here every week. And uh, your commitment to this training session is, is uh, what motivates us and uh, helps us move forward. Thank you for your support and thank you for being here. And also thank you for... Uh, introducing our training session to your friends and anyone you know that I can uh, have benefit from this training session. It's really appreciated. And also happy new month is uh, the start of April, uh, sorry, May. So happy new month to everyone. And as it's a new month, we are going to start on a new stage of uh, Moracle Accountancy Formula, which is uh, reporting, uh, stage five. And uh, Morla will going to join us in a few minutes. So, uh, yes, he's here, I guess. So just once again, thank you for being here. Uh, it's really appreciated your commitment and uh, I hope you have a great session today. Thank you. Hi, Morlai. Hello. Hi, Sepide. Hi, good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, all. Um, I hope you guys are well. It's another beautiful day. Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying and, I'm, and, I'm uh, seeing a new, a new face here. Welcome, yes. welcome to those who do uh, uh, those who just uh, joined us, it's their first session. Mm -hmm. I, uh, let me see, um, Moshud, I, I think. Yes. Hi, from Moshud. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we are so happy to have you here. Sorry to interrupt you, more like. So where, where are you, where are you, where is Moshud from? You know, Moshud? And I'm, it's the first time I, I'm, I'm seeing yeah. Uh, I'm here, so uh, we would like to meet you, Mushud, if you like. Mushud is from Gambia. Okay, Mushud. From Gambia. Oh, from oh, Gambia. Oh. Hello, hello, sir. How are you? Good, good afternoon. Or oh, rather, good morning, sir. It's morning <laughs> here. Good morning, good morning, Mushud. Yeah, how are you? I'm okay, sir. Oh, that, uh, good to see you. Good to see you, sir. <laughs> well, I want I want to spotlight you. You know, you see. Uh, this guy, when I went to Gambia, you know, and uh, this guy looked after me, yes. Uh, so I must say, yes. And uh, you got to treat him special, yeah. And, <laughs> Thank uh, you, sir. <laughs> yeah. So you're welcome. You know, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, it's good. It's good. It's good to see you all. And um, uh, if you can turn on your camera, yeah, that would be great. Yes, just to see um, uh, people's faces, yeah, and um, I always, you know, in my accountancy career, wherever we go, you know, we have this, um, um, uh, the way they paint accountants, they say accountants are boring, yes, and uh, we, we, we stand to say no to that, yes, we're not boring, yes, we cannot be boring, yes. And uh, we want to we want to show up. We want to be smiling. We want to engage. You know, we want to yes uh, transform the lives of you know the people that we're working with. Yes. So uh, if you can show your camera, give us a smile, give us a wave, wherever you're calling from, it will be really great. Um, <laughs> yes. So it's another first day. You know, uh, time flies so quickly. Um, but I just want to take the opportunity to thank each and every one of you. You know, for taking the time to be here. Um, I know you guys, uh, as accountants, we're all busy in you know, whatever it is that we're doing. To leave what you're doing for an hour, you know, to come and be here, I am really grateful, you know. And tap yourself in the back, you know, for doing that. And I say, always, I hope what you are uh, going to get from here is going to help you, you know, in what you do. You know, on a daily basis, the love for what we do, yes. Um, so, my advice is, go and put into practice. Yeah, it's more practice and practice and practice. Yeah, 
Um, and when you put that into practice and the love for what you do, you get emotionally involved in serving people. Seriously, guys, you know, it makes a difference. Yeah. Okay. So thank you again. Well, our Thursday session, yeah, as you guys know, um, it's always about the molecular accountancy formula. This is the formula, yes, and the method, you know, or the uh, way we serve our clients, yeah, uh, in molecule. Uh, we've designed this formula, yeah, out of experience. I myself heavily involved in that, you know, uh, over 30 years experience in the, in the accounting field. Uh, I've seen a lot, you know, but I've still seeing quite a lot of things, yes, still learning, yeah. Uh, because it's always been changing. Uh, so all that, you know, collective experience and wisdom is what we fed into, you know, this molecular accountancy formula. Yes. And uh, to simplify, you know, things a little bit, I like to simplify things. Yeah. But to serve clients in a certain way. Yeah. We want to serve clients. You know, accountants, we don't know how to serve. Yes. Uh, and for me, as I say, it's, a, it's a, what you call a work in progress. Yes. Uh, that's why I enjoy coming down here on a Thursday to talk to you guys. Yes. I like talking. I like talking about this subject matter. Yes. And then the reason why I decide, you know, because it's a decision, a conscious decision to, to talk about this subject matter, because every time I talk about it, you know, something new, you know, uh, the level of awareness, yeah, is shifting. Yes. And um, it's getting better and better. So I will advise you guys, you know, don't be shy to talk about this, yes? Uh, because if you keep it inside, you know, then uh, you're not too sure, yeah? Uh, talk about it. Share it to other people, people, you know? Allow people to question you, you know, engage. Because you're going to get more out of it, the awareness. Um, so this molecular accountancy formula is not only about accounting, yeah? It's about the mindset, yes? Again, the mindset, you know, for me, up until a point in time, you know, I was not fully aware, you know, that you need to have a certain mindset, you know, to be able to serve. Yes. Um, until I had to, you know, do personal development training. And then, you know, I got a lot of exposure, you know, to different things and different people, you know. So um, I decided against a decision, a conscious decision to do this. And the benefit of that, you know, and clearly, you know, uh, maybe you guys um, uh, uh, don't know me for too long, but if you know me for, you know, for a long time, you see that there's a lot of shift, there's a lot of change, yeah? And uh, in the way I conduct myself, in the way I do things, yes, uh, in the profession, you know, now, you know, sorry, you know, I'm happy to talk about any subject matter around this, you know, uh, accounting. And I can stand anywhere you know, and talk about this, you know, because I believe what I'm doing, yes? The self-confidence, you know, but also I have something to share, yes? So these are the kind of um, issues that, you know, when, you know, uh, you don't focus on your mindset, you know, things are all over the place, you miss out, yes? So I had to bolt on mindset into this program. So you got the accounting, you got the mindset, and then the artificial intelligence, where now... You cannot do anything now without artificial intelligence. Think about it. For all of us to be connected now like this, wherever you guys are connected, you know, those guys all over the world, yes, well, yeah, it's digital, yeah, and we cannot, cannot appreciate that, yes. Uh, so I'm saying to you guys, if you've got a problem, you know, with the way digital systems work, artificial intelligence, you know, guys, is here to stay. Yeah, it's here to stay. So big time. I mean, we're going to talk about, you know, uh, some of this in practice. Yeah, when you see how transactions are being posted now, yeah, from QuickBooks, from Zero, you know, you see how the machine intelligence, the learning, you know, that you see in front of you, how things have been done. Oh, my goodness. You, you cannot, you cannot but want to do more or to learn more. So it's all these three is what is packaged in this molecular accountancy formula. So when you guys hear me talking about this, every day, every week, every month, yes, uh, I believe in it. Yes, and it's shifting. 
yes, a lot of how we're doing things at Moeco and how we are serving our clients. Yes, so important. Got the knowledge, yes, you got the skills, but really, if your mindset is not okay, yes, seriously, you're not going to be able to serve. Yeah, you got to have the right mindset, guys. And that mindset is not like you, you've arrived, you know? You're never going to arrive. Yes, and uh, it's an ongoing process. So here every morning, yes, we have mindset training session where we allow people to express themselves. Yes, uh, the range of topics, you know, that we do here at Moeco every morning, yeah, it's beautiful, you know? So again, it's helping us to prepare to go and serve our clients, yeah? So I really appreciate you guys joining us, you know, every Thursday, you know, uh, like this, you know, to talk about accounting, yes, uh, mindset and artificial intelligence. Yeah, so hold that. That's what the Moracle Accountancy Formula is about. Yeah. Okay. This month, yes, um, I think I need help um, because I'm not able to show my um, accountancy formula. Sepeda, would you be able to share that for me, please? Yes, it's just a second. Yeah, thank you. So this month, uh, the month of May, we are focusing on reporting. Yes. Um, so that's number five in the molecular accountancy formula. Reporting is the is the is what we're going to be talking about uh, for the whole month. So. Um, as you see, reporting there is a statutory audit, independent examination, and then the accountant's report. That's what you got down there. Yeah. Um, when it comes to statutory audit, for example, yeah, as you guys know, Moracle is um, an accounting and auditing firm. So they're regulated by SCCA to conduct accounting services, but also auditing. Yes. So Moracle, the firm itself, is registered for audit so it's an audit firm but also i you know the director signing those accounts and those audit reports i have to be an auditor myself so i have a certificate myself yes so moeco has got an audit certificate and then me i have an audit certificate yes because i am signing on behalf of moeco so think about it so more cool, the farm has got certificates, and me, I've got certificates. So, pressure, isn't it? Yeah, the farm, but also me. So, every time we talk about audit, I say, well, auditors, you know, a special breed. Yes? Because there's a lot of um, expectation. Yeah, so I want you guys to understand this. Yes, and uh, because again, if we understand these things, you know, then we can begin to put some more. Uh, attention to it. So Moracle is an audit firm. Yeah, so you got a certificate. Moracle, you know, uh, auditor, audit firm. And then me, more like, because I'm signing this audit report, I need to have a certificate as well. Yeah, okay, I says it's a requirement, you need to get all of that. Okay, we're gonna talk a lot more about auditing, yes, um, this month. Uh, we got quite a lot of audit work that is ongoing at the moment, you know, so, I'll be giving some examples, yes, practical examples of some of the issues that we see from audit. But also, we're going to talk a lot more about, you know, um, the, the digital way of auditing. At the moment, all of our auditing that we're doing is digital, yeah? Um, and I'd like to share some examples. But also, we're encouraging you know, um, interns or anybody who wants to get expert to audit, yeah, let us know so we can arrange for you to come and see, you know, um, how audit is being done. Yeah, because we've got an audit program and uh, we've got a team that is working. So we'll invite you, yeah, so you can come and get um, a feel of how auditing yeah, works. But other than audit, we have independent examination. Independent examination, yeah, is basically for non-for-profit or charities. Those charities that are not subject to audit, they fall within the independent examination. So what is independent examination? We'll talk a little bit more about it, you know, but it's basically some kind of scrutiny. I call it a light touch scrutiny. Yeah, it's not an audit, 
but it's some kind of scrutiny, yeah, where you are looking at the accounts and comparing those accounts with the accounting system, yeah, which has produced those accounts, yeah, and then you got an independent examiner, yeah, who signs off. So again, in that case, I will be the independent examiner. In that, you know, um, it's not an audit, so you don't need an audit certification for you to become an independent examiner. An independent examiner, I've got a slightly lower, you know, criteria for you, you know, to act as independent examiner. The accountant report there is if you are not, you know, um, an audit client, you are not, you know, a charity, then for limited companies, then accountant report applies. Yeah. So again, we will find time to explain the difference between an accountant report and an independent examination. Yeah. Because accountant report and independent examination are non statutory audit. Yeah. But what is the difference? So there's a difference there. Yeah. So we'll be able to explain that at some point. But I want you to focus on those three. Because for more code, these are three areas that we focus on more. Yes. Um, there's another area uh, which we're now going to be involved more and more and more, but that is uh, what we call the grant audit. Yeah, so a project audit. And what that means that it's not a statutory audit, it's not independent examination, it's not an accountant report, but it's just um, an audit, you know, of um, a particular funding or grant that is required by the grantor. So the a grant has been given to an organization and the funder is saying you need a statutory auditor to audit, you know, the grant. Yeah. So that it gets a audit. Talked about, you know, this particular area, particularly when it comes to reporting, you know, um, you got to have Yeah, but now, yeah, you have to have, you know, an abundance of uh, emotional intelligence. Yes. Uh, what do I mean by that? You know, um, this old them days, I remember when we were even in the audit books, you know, and uh, the way you describe an audit. So it's like, um, the auditor, wow, it's so powerful. I'm telling you, yes? Um, uh, there was an example I always like to give, you know, say when um, uh, some people in the finance function, the auditor yeah, uh, gives notice that they're coming, you know, uh, next month, for example, yeah? And you've got some guys in the finance office, once they hear that, they hear that notice that the auditor is coming in next month, then it's an opportunity for them to go and then book their sick leave in advance. Yes. Next month, I'm going to be ill. So I'm, I'm not going to be in the office. So I need to book my sick leave because they don't want to be where the auditor is. When the auditor is there, they don't want to be around. So they book a sick leave. Just think about it. People booking sick leave in advance. Yes. Okay. This is how, you know, auditing was seen. Yeah. And in some instances, even now, it's seen. When the auditor is coming, oh my goodness, you know, well, um, uh, everything stops. <laughs> yes. But it should not be like that, I'm saying, guys. Yeah. It should not be like that. So, emotional intelligence, a lot of it is expected now from the auditor. Yes. For them to be able to know their own emotions. Yeah. And then also able to understand other people. The people that are going to be auditing the, the, the side teaching. somebody you know for us we've been trained to doubt and doubt and doubt are you with me yes anything that is in front of you doubt it that is how we've been trained yeah and now all of a sudden yeah they say we have to now consider the emotions of people yeah oh my goodness I'm um, when it comes to auditor.
Yeah, the intention on the, on the other hand. Yeah, and uh, it's a little bit challenging. Yes, uh, as we know, and that's why for me the mindset training is so so helpful because it makes for me I'm able to connect those two. At one point in time, you will see me you know, to the other hand. I need to be able to see. Well, hold on. If you are not able to give me that information, I should understand when you give me a reasonable excuse for why you are not able to give it to me. Are you with me? I need to. I need to understand where you're coming from. Yes. So mindset training has helped me to be open, don't to have just this one point of view. Yes, this narrow vision. Yeah, you gotta have an open mind. Yeah, is what we are required to do. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, but as you guys know, we would not be talking about you know number five, stage number five, uh, without asking where have we come from. Yes, you just don't jump on stage number five. Yeah, you must come from somewhere. Yes, so think about it. That's why this molecular accountants formula is got those numbers there. It says, number one, management information system. Number two, management accounts and value added. Number three, the statutory accounts and scheduling. Number four, taxation. And then number five. Yes. And once you've done the audit, and, and then these accounts will now be filed with the authorities. Five. Yeah, okay. So think about it. Before you get to number five, yeah, number one happened. Number one is the management information system. This is where everything started. Yeah, you've got to have different systems in place. And when I say different systems, it's a lot of different systems sales ledger system, purchase ledger system, cash and bank system. The payroll system, the uh, the VAT system, you know, uh, you know, all sorts of different systems are coming together in stage number one to be able to do what? To capture the information, the financial information, record that financial information, analyze that financial information, and reconcile the financial information. Yeah, you have to have all the different systems, and where you have different systems then you've got to make sure those different systems are talking to each other. So you've got to be integrated. Yeah? Um, well, remember those days when we have to, we, they stand alone computers, you know? A computer, you know, by itself, you know, is operating by itself, you know, and the other one is operating by itself, you know? So you're doing your own business, I'm doing my own business, and we say, computer, I remember those early days. And then now, you want to now say, well, hold on, oh, what are you talking about? You know, and then, uh, oh, what are you talking about? You find out that, you know, it, both of them might be talking about the same thing. Yeah, they're duplicating it, yeah, by standing alone. So you want to bring them together for them to be talking. Yes, integrated so that when that person is doing something, the other person is seeing what other person is doing. Yeah, uh, it brings efficiency. Uh, we've moved, you know, we've come a long way, I would say, you know, even now, I cannot even wait, I'm telling you, and I know it's happening right now, because in fact, um, I'm even conscious when I'm talking, my phone, I move my phone away, yes, because as I'm talking to my phone, my phone is responding now, yes, I cannot wait, you know, to start talking to QuickBooks, and say, QuickBooks, I want you to post this sales invoice, I want you to post this purchase invoice, and QuickBooks does that for me. Yes, even that probably it will be too much for me to be talking about it. I know I like talking, but you know what? Sometimes you know the system, the machine intelligence or the artificial intelligence will be so advanced that you know uh, it will be picking up what I'm thinking. This is where we're coming. Yes, this is going to happen, guys. Yes. So when I'm talking about integration. Yeah, we need to be able to appreciate, you know, that all the different systems that we got, they need to be connected. Yes, uh, the sales ledger connected to the accounting system. The payroll system need to be connected to the accounting system. Yes, the VAT, for you to file the VAT to HMRC, 
the accounting system, whether it be QuickBooks or Zero or whichever accounting system that you're using, you need to be connected to HMRC. Yeah. So HMRC, what you think they're doing? Yes. They, you know, they are, you know, they they're saying, okay, we we'll see what you're doing. Those days, you know, uh, when things were not connected, you know, you could do, you know, you could do whatever it is. But now, for you to file a VAT, your accounting system needs to be connected to HMRC. Yes, the same for payroll. Payroll, now you got to connect your accounting system to HMRC. So every month, you need to post, you know, and file, you know, your payroll with HMRC. Yes, those olden days, good olden days, it was not like that. It was standalone. It was not, the connectivity was not happening. So what I'm saying here, guys, when you are in management information system stage or mode, yeah, you got to appreciate all of these things that is happening around you. Yes, it means that you need to be able to uh, to think about. Well, hold on, you know, I'm not. I don't want to do manual stuff anymore. I want to be able to do, you know, um, everything digital, paperless environment. Yeah, it's so important. So all these different systems are coming together to capture the data, record the data, analyze the data, and reconcile the data. Yeah. For you guys who know me and you hear my preaching all the time, for you to be able to record, capture that data, record it, analyze and reconcile, yes, you need to, first of all, know what we call the background information. The background information about a particular organization, you need to know it. If you don't know about this organization, yeah, really emotionally involved in what this organization does, Yes, you are not going to be able to capture that data properly, record that data properly, analyze it, and reconcile, you know, this financial data. Yeah, so we pay so much attention to background information, understanding the clients. Yeah, so important. And I'm asking, you know, even for even the senior guys, the guys who are qualified, the SCCA, you know, uh, or even working wherever you are, yeah, I'm asking you, try that exercise. Yeah, to just, you know, just touch yourself, you know, put it down to say how, you know, uh, what is my understanding, you know, of this organization that I'm working for? Do I really understand this organization inside out? You know, and you find that there's a gaps, yes, appearing yeah, in your knowledge or understanding of this, of this organization that you are working for, maybe for so many years. And it's so good, you know, for you to be aware that it's a gap and then you close that gap. But we are advising that you really need to know, yes, uh, this organization before you start posting, yes, uh, recording this transaction, analyzing, and reconciling. And I'm telling you guys, you know, it's so much, you know, truth in this, you know. I'm not just saying it, you know, I'm seeing this day in, day out. I'm challenging my colleagues, even challenging myself, yes. Um, there's gaps. You know, in our knowledge, you know, about clients. And that gap needs to be identified, needs to be closed. Yes, we need to close it. And if we don't close it, yeah, it's going to cause so much problem. There are times where the figures that we are actually, you know, um, working on, those figures are clearly not okay. Yes, and the reason why they're not okay is because, you know, the knowledge, the background information that we have about this client yeah, it's not good enough. Yes, we got some, but still not good enough. Yeah. And it is something that you need know, a constant improvement, I say. Yeah. So take that on. Yes. To understand about the client. Yes. And things are changing. So update your understanding and your knowledge about the client. Yeah. And I always say, guys, it's a decision that we're making here. Yeah. And the decision. Yeah, it's between, you know, uh, well, with, as I say, you've got a choice. Yeah, you can decide, well, sorry, you know, uh, um, I want to be ignorant about this. I don't care. Yeah, well, that's not how we are here. Yes, and if you walk, well, sorry, we do care about our clients. Yes, because even in our mission, our vision, we say, you know, why does more could exist? More could exist. Number one, to transform the lives of our clients. And number two, to transform the lives of our staff. 
Are you with me? So we do care about our clients. So that choice that we have to say, well, we want to be ignorant. No, we're not going to go down that route. Yeah, the route that we want to go is to uh, knowledge route. Yeah, let's choose that knowledge route, guys. We are professionals. We are accountants. We owe a duty of professional care and skill. Yeah, in the performance of our duties every day, not some days, every day. Every week, every month, every year. Yeah, so background information, spend the time. Yes, spend the time to put down your understanding, you know, of this particular organization because it will help you a lot. Yeah, even when it comes to not just the posting, but payroll. When you're doing payroll, you know, I had a situation, I'm talking to my colleagues, you know, uh, we're talking about trying to reconcile payroll. But hold on, how are you going to reconcile payroll? If you don't, if you don't have sufficient background, you know, understanding or knowledge about what is going on around payroll, yes, uh, you're gonna you're gonna be you know going you know all over the place, yeah. Uh, so you ask absolutely, it's a must. So I'm really, really standing here and appealing to everybody here who's listening to me, and even those who are going to be listening, you know, on replay. You know, please focus on the background information. It's so, so important. There are key, you know, tasks in there. For example, to prepare a budget, to prepare a financial procedure manual, to prepare, you know, um, your review your chart of accounts. Yes. This morning we were talking about, or the day before yesterday or so, we were talking about uh, the chart of accounts. Yes. Uh, the distinction between cost of sales and then overheads. Yeah. Your chart of account needs to be designed so that you know it pulls that information those codes are separate codes yes cost of sales codes are different from overhead codes yes direct cost is different from support cost so if you don't make sure your chart of account is actually you know um, um adapted properly you understand uh so that it is now in line with the activities of that business then, you know, what you're going to post is going to be all over the place, guys. Yes? That data that you're capturing, that data that you're recording, that analysis and reconciliation is going to be in vain because the information is going to be all over the place. Yeah? So it's so important, guys, the background information. Yeah? The financial procedure manual. If you've never done one before, yes, please ask us. We'll give you a template. Yes? Try and complete it. Even when, you know, you say, well, I know, you know, um, or even if the financial procedure manual is there for this particular client that you're working on, you know, it's always different when you yourself do it yourself. Yes. So leave the financial procedure manual that exists and try and create, you know, a new one, update it, but start it from scratch using the template. Yeah, I'm telling you, you know, uh, um, it's so refreshing. It gives you lot more understanding about the organization because the financial procedure manual is allowing you to detail so much about the finance function and what is happening yeah um so that you know you say here this is how we do things everybody needs to follow yeah the protocols the procedures that we have in this financial you know at uh, the finance function yeah not uh, Shukesh, you know, uh, thinking, well, this is how Shukesh does it. Um, Noah, this is how Noah does it. Yes. Um, James, this is how James does it. Molai, this is how Molai does it. And we are all working for the same organization. We are working for the same finance function. It cannot be. Yes. That is why the financial procedure manual is there. So that everybody follows the same way, the same thinking, the same protocols, the same processes. So even if these guys are not there, they're gone, yes, uh, anybody who comes in will be able to pick up that manual and then able to follow through. That is why that financial procedure manual is there. It's just good practice, guys, yes, to make sure that, you know, your background information, yeah, is so, so super, guys. It helps you a lot. And that's what you find in stage number one. Yes, it's an ongoing process, guys. But think about it. The auditor, when it comes in, in stage number five, yes, is looking back at stage number one. Yes, it's looking back 
and he's saying, well, hold on, I know there should be a, a management information system, yes, in place, yeah, meaning that there are different systems that would have been existed, yeah, to be able to capture, to record, to analyze, and to reconcile. That's what the, the auditor is thinking. That's what he's expecting. So one of the first things that the auditor wants to see is going to be asking for the financial procedure manual. Why? Because the financial procedure manual is what details everything that we do in the finance function. Yeah? So you can see why it's so important Yeah, uh, if you are involved in stage number one yeah, that you need to produce a financial procedure manual. Yeah? Because when the auditor comes in at stage number five, one of the first things that they want to see, that is that document. Have you got a financial procedure manual? Yeah? And uh, I'm telling you, when you say yes, I'm sure the next question the auditor wants to say is, um, can I have a copy, please? Yes. What he's looking for is looking, well, hold on. Is this financial procedure manual, you know, uh, does he explain to me as an auditor who was not involved in the day-to-day -day posting, the monthly reconciliation, the quarterly reviews, the auditor was not there, yes? So he's now looking at a manual and say, this manual, does he explain yeah, what the finance function has been involved with, yes, on a day-by-day -day -day basis, month-by-month, -month, week by week, you know, and year? If he says yes, he says, well, okay, when was this last reviewed? He wants to see when the financial procedure manual was reviewed. If you have a financial procedure manual that was dated, for example, yes, before COVID, yeah, 20, uh, 2020 or 2021, yeah, think about it. Yes, um, after COVID, there's so many things that have changed now in the finance function. Yes. Um, and if you had a financial procedure manual that was last reviewed or prepared in 2020, and uh, has not been reviewed, you can see how that is out of date. Yeah? Because there's so much that has changed Yeah, after COVID. Now we're doing things digitally. Now we have this uh, hybrid way of working. Yeah? Two days in the office, three days at home. You understand? So all of that needs to have been updated in the financial procedure manual. Yes. The way things are done now, it's not, oh, well, we've, we don't have the paper base now. Now everything now is now digital so we have you know a, a one drive where every information yeah is kept that needs to be updated in the financial procedure manual the auditor want to see that that this is what is happening yeah in the finance function so guys can you see why i am emphasizing that stage number one is so so important guys yes and i even saying here even if your organization is not audited it's good practice guys yeah, it's good practice to have all of these things in place. Financial procedure manual, the budget. You have to have a copy of the budget. Don't say, oh, I'm a small business, you know, so I don't need one. Oh, I, I know everything, you know, so it's up in my head. No. You should have a budget, yes? Because the budget is telling you this is how or where we are going, yes? This is our, this is the pathway. Yeah, we are here today. We're looking to get there at the end of the year. Yeah, every organization should have that. Yeah, as part of the background information. Yes, your chart of account. If your chart of account is all over the place, yes, the auditor yeah, reviews the accounting system and see that the duplication yeah, in the chart of account, what do you think the auditor is going to think? Yes, it's going to begin to doubt, you know, what is happening. Yes, you got duplications in your chart of account. That means somebody, the finance function, have not stopped to adapt it. Yeah, uh, to make sure that the activities that the organization is involved in, where income is coming from, where money is being spent, yes, that has been you know captured you know correctly in the chart of account. The auditor is looking at you and say, "Hold on, well, I don't trust this system. I don't trust you know Shukash." I don't trust Noah. But think about it. Even when you know information or the system is so good, the auditor is still not going to trust you because of this professional skepticism. Yes? Now 
the auditor knows that there is no system, yeah, or the system is just, you know, anyhow, yeah, what do you think is going to happen? It's first of all have professional skepticism to apply at all times. It doesn't trust you. And now it's seen that, you know what? You know, uh, there's no system in place or the adequate system does not exist. Well, that is double not trust. Yeah, think about it. You, the auditor, standing in stage number five, and you're looking back at stage number one, and then you got a situation like this. What do you think you are going to do? And that's for me, is why I'm asking, you know, everyone that is involved in stage number one. Yes, if you are in the finance function, yeah, whatever it is that you're doing, guys, make sure that you know you're able to make sure the system, yeah, is fit for purpose. Are you with me? Make sure. Don't just, you know, want to post. I know most of us want to post, you know. Like I see the young guys who are coming through, you know, once they've got a QuickBooks certification, they've got a zero certification. Oh, my goodness. You can see the excitement, you know. I'm so happy for you guys, you know. Uh, but yet still, I'm saying to you guys, you still know that yeah, to capture data, record that data, analyze that data, reconcile the data, you're still not ready yet. Why? Because you have to have a detailed background information about any organization that you're going to be working. Yes? Uh, so don't worry about I'm wanting to post. Oh, I want to record. I want to analyze. I want to reconcile. Yes? Um, try and get the background information. So when a job is given to you, any client, I'm saying to you guys, yes, thank you very much for giving me this job. But I'll need to get the background information. Yeah, can you help me? I need to talk to somebody. Because to get the background information, you've got to go and find the information. You've got to talk to somebody. Yes? Uh, the people who are involved, yes, who got experience or connected to that business, they need to tell you. Yeah? And this is why I'm saying to my colleagues, please, guys, yeah, don't hold the information. Don't hold it. Yes? And this is one thing that we accountants, we are, we are famous. You know, we, we, we hold. We hold financial information. Yes? Evidence. We keep it in our head. You know, we hold it. You know, and um, uh, we don't want to share it. I'm talking to my colleagues, you know, every day now we have a session where we meet and talk about it. Sorry, more like, what do I know? I want to talk about everything I know about a client. Yeah. So that it is recorded centrally and everybody who's got access to that client knows. So it's not only Molai who knows about that client or Shuket, you know, or, or James. Yeah. But it's not easy though, guys. Yes, because we're human beings. We like to hold things very close. And that's how our training is. Yeah? So we need to shift that paradigm. We need to shift that habit. And that's why mindset training is actually added to this. And say, guys, you know, please, you know, you've got to have the right mindset in the way you see things. Yeah? Information, yeah, it does not, it does not belong to you. Even though they know that, yes, in this space, accountant, we got to have, you know, professional, what you call it now, you know, and uh, 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 those professionalism or those professional attitude that is required of us, yeah, confidentiality. Oh, well, I got access to information, so that information, yeah, belongs to me, only for my own eyes. So when I have it, I need to protect that information. I understand that. But remember, that information, yeah, particularly if you're working on a client, that information is not yours, yes? It's the client's information that have to be accessible and open to everybody, yes? So I'm saying, guys, yes, a molecule, yes, uh, particularly when you are in applying the molecular accountancy formula, you need to make sure that all the information now is in the center, yeah? So when a client is given to you, the first thing that you want to ask for is the background information. Ask for it. Where's the background information? Well, we're going to be, I'm telling you, yes, uh, uh, talking to some of my colleagues who are now going to be talking to the most senior guys, yes, and um, uh, this I'm licking their secret now, you know. Uh, some of them were telling me yesterday or the day yesterday, oh, I'm going to ask, you know, um, um, uh, for this information. Yeah, oh, I'm going to ask for this budget. Oh, I'm going to ask for the financial procedure manual. I'm going to ask for this. I'm telling you, that is the right way. Yes? Um, and you're going to. You, go, you should ask for that information. Ask for it. Yes? So, and I'm asking to the senior guys as well here, 
Yeah, please don't be embarrassed. You know, if you don't have it, say I don't have it. You know, and um, and give a reason why you, why why you don't. You know, but then you know, uh, try and put it in place. Yes, the same with me. Yes. So again, you know, I'm part of this as part of the senior team. Yeah. So if I been asked a question and I say, well, you know, uh, I don't have it. You know, I should be able to raise my hands and say, sorry, I don't have it. But let's put it. Let's fix it now. Yeah. So I'm asking all of us now, as a client, as work to serve the client. Yes. Uh, if the information does not exist, let's work to close that gap. Yeah. Don't feel offended that a junior person is going to be asking you as a senior person. No, sorry. What's your problem? Don't do that. Yes. Okay. Uh, just understand, because now we are we are we are promoting you know, openness. Yes. Transparency. You know, and accountability. Yeah. Don't be upset. Don't be offended. So I'm appealing. But we need to make sure that the finance function yeah, is fit for purpose, guys. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, in the interest of serving this client. Yeah. Remember, we want to transform the lives of those clients. We don't want a client where we are the accountant. Yes. Remember, we are the accountant. Yeah. And we allow the client, you know, to get involved in the finance function. I don't think it's right. Are you with me, guys? Yes. Let's take the full responsibility. Let's transform their lives. That's what we agree. And by doing what we say in stage number one, we are going to be able to transform the lives of our clients. I'm telling you guys, it's not easy, but you know what? If you continuously do it, yes, and we focus on it together, we'll be able to do it. But the auditor, when it comes in, yeah, it's looking at stage number one. That's the first thing that he's focusing on. This system that exists, that is capturing all of this data, recording all this data, analyzing and reconciling. The VAT system, the budget, the financial procedure manual, this back, he himself, the auditor, he needs the background information. So one of the first things that we will do yeah, is to complete what we call the permanent file and review the permanent file. Well, we'll talk a little bit more, you know, um, uh, next session. What is that permanent file? And why do we have permanent file? Why do we need permanent file? Yes? In auditing, you've got permanent files, you've got current files. Permanent audit files, current audit files. Okay? So we, there's a distinction there. But the auditor, when he comes in, he wants to see the permanent, he wants to complete his permanent file. Yeah? And a permanent file, that's where you got detailed background information of the organization. Because if it doesn't do it, yeah, it's not going to get, you know, a sufficient understanding of the organization for him to start planning. He needs the background information, permanent file, yes, to be able to plan, yes, for the audit work that he needs to carry out. Yeah? So I want you to follow that. The auditor, standing in stage number five, he needs to build his understanding of this organization. So that information is captured in the permanent file. Detailed information about that organization that is going to be audited. It creates a permanent file. Yes. Okay. And then that permanent file and that understanding that is going to get out of that is what is going to help him yeah, to now design the audit plan, because you got to plan, yes, to enable you to carry out the audit testing. And the audit testing, as we know, two types of audit testing. One is the compliance testing, and the other one is called substantive testing. But I want to leave you today, yeah, with this. Yeah, this short process I've just explained. The auditor standing in stage number five, Yes, the first thing that he wants to do is he wants to get the background information. Yeah, so he needs to complete a permanent file. Yes, okay, that permanent file is a whole lot of um, questions there, where it's all pointing to the background information about this organization. It's looking at the systems that existed. It's looking at the environment that this client is exposed to. It's looking at the people who are involved those who are charged with governance. It's looking at so many different things. Are you with me? Yeah? 
all of that will fit into the permanent file. Yes? Why is he doing that? Because he now wants to use that understanding, yeah, to be able to now design a plan, an audit plan, because you cannot do an audit if you don't plan. Okay? You've got to audit plan. Yes? So you need the background information, permanent file, to be able, you know, to get so much knowledge and understanding of this organization so that you can put a plan, design a plan. Yes? And when you design that plan, that plan you're going to now carry out. And when you carry out that plan, what you're doing is you're going to carry out two types of tests. Yeah? The first test that you need to do is what is called compliance test, or they call it system testing, or they call it walkthrough testing. Okay? What does that mean? And where in this formula yeah, is the auditor looking for that testing to be carried out? Where do you think? Yes? Good old number one. Are you with me? Good old number one. The auditor is standing in stage number five. He turned back and is looking at stage number one to carry out the compliance testing, to carry out that what you call walkthrough testing or carry out a system testing. So you can see where this management information system is coming from. Yes, all these different systems that exist in stage number one. The auditor wants to test it first. That is the first test that he wants to carry out. Yeah, okay. But before he carries out that test, he needs to plan. Yeah, he needs to design a plan, an audit plan. And before he does the audit plan, he needs to have the background information. It needs to have a permanent file. Okay. So, guys, I want you to hold that. And again, the reason why I'm emphasizing, and every day, every week, every month, when I'm talking about stage number one, management information system, yes, you can begin to see where I'm saying we cannot underestimate what is required or what is needed in stage number one. Because their auditor, yeah, think about it, you know, this guy who is coming with this professional skepticism, is already doubting you. Yes? It's already, you know, in that space where he's thinking, well, hold on, do I trust Shukesh? Do I trust Noah? Do I trust James? Do I trust Miriam? Do I trust Ashik? Do I trust Molai? Yes? It's actually, that's what he's coming, he has that. Yes? Even if you watch him or her, clearly, you will see he's written yeah, on his forehead. Yeah, on the forehead. Professional skepticism. We're doubting and doubting and doubting. They give me those figures, I doubt it. They tell me about the system, I doubt it. Yes? Okay? Well, remember that. You, that's the first thing. So when you are in stage number one, you know that the auditor is coming. Yes? That's the kind of attitude that he has professionally. It's not that he personally hates you, Shukesh. Don't take, don't take offense, yeah? If your auditor... You know, it's auditing you. It's not. It's not personally hating you. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't like you. No, that's not what he's saying. Professionally saying, I don't trust this guy. Yes, and uh, because the information that he's going to give to me, it might be, yeah, it's trying to play. You know, uh, a quick one, or it's going to do, or it's got a motive. That is how we are trained. Yes, but again, you know, as I always say, you know, uh, you know me with. Um, I talk a little bit to a light-hearted, you understand? God help us. After you have been trained, yeah, to do and think that way, yes, five days a week, you know, eight hours or ten hours, you know, um, a day, you know, you're thinking about this, you are always, you know, in that kind of frame of mind. You know what happens? You take it home with you or wherever you go. It doesn't stay at work only. It's just the grace of God for you to be able to switch. Yes, uh, we have to learn to switch because I'm telling you, the professionalism, yes, uh, you've got to be top of your game at all times, guys. We have to be, yes. And if we're not, yes, really, I'm telling you, you know, um, bylaw number eight in the ACCA, you know, uh, regulations, bylaw number eight is waiting for you. Are you with me? Bylaw number eight. 
as well, I'm telling you, it's so, I'm telling you, it's so long, you know, the amount of things that uh, you can fall foul of the rules for SCCA, for SCCA to discipline you. Are you with me? So you always want to be on top of your game. You have professionalism because you are a member, you know, of a, a recognized, a, a, what you call it, a, a, an institution. Yes. Uh, they are regulating you. You as a professional, yes, you cannot be seen, you know, to bring the profession to disrepute. So you really need to focus on this. Professional skepticism at all times. It has been preached and over preached, you know, and continuously been preached. Yeah. That's why you see the auditor like this. That's why you see the accountant thinking like this. Yeah. Because if it doesn't, yeah, it's going to now fall foul of the rules. And by law, number eight is going to now, you know, going to cause problem. And nobody wants to go and have problems with the SCCA where they breach, you know, the regulations. Nobody wants to do that. Are you with me? Okay. So when you get an auditor, guys, and the auditor is now behaving in a certain way, in this way, I want you to understand. And you, when you're auditing, don't be shy, you know, to behave that way. Yes? Because you are expected, you know, to express, you know, and then demonstrate and show at all times that, you know, professional skepticism is being applied. But don't forget, yeah, you need to take into consideration the emotional intelligence as well. But the auditor is standing stage number five, it's looking at stage number one and saying, I want to see what has gone on in stage number one. Yes? That's what he's focusing on to start with. And then once it dawns number one, and then now it goes to number three, the account. Yes? And the account, yes, stage number three, is what he talks about the substantive testing or verification. Yeah? Well, there is a kind of um, a correlation between those two. Yes, those two tests. I will talk a little bit more in, um, during the course of this month about him. But when he does the first test, yes, the compliance test, testing of the system, and he carries out walkthrough tests, and if he's now satisfied with that test, then he now needs to consider yeah, the test that he's going to do in stage number three, yeah, to reduce it. Because he's now saying, I've applied professional skepticism, yeah, I've tested the systems and the systems, you know, are really good, you know, um, as prescribed. That's what he's saying. In the financial procedure manual, this is what they say they are doing. And when I tested the system through walkthrough, and I can see they are doing exactly what they said in the manual. And that's whatever it is in the manual, yeah, it's fit for purpose, it's good. So the auditor now is in a good frame of mind in a way. But it's still, it's still. Have the professional skepticism. Yeah, don't doubt an auditor. Don't even think because he's smiling to you, the professional skepticism is not there or it's gone. No, he's smiling to you, but he still have the professional skepticism in his mind. He's still doubting you, even though the system is saying everything looks okay. But what he now needs to do now, he now needs to now consider whether it will reduce, yes, the, 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 the testing that he's going to do in stage number three. If the system is good, as prescribed, and it's proved that, you now need to consider that. Well, think about it. Yes, if the system was not good, you have something in the financial procedure manual, and that is not what you are doing every day. So the, the professional, the, the uh, financial manual says something, and then you're actually doing something different. Think about it. And the auditor does, does the test and prove that this is the case. The manual says something, and you're actually doing something that is not okay. What do you think the, the guy is now going to think? Yeah? Now, it's got more risk to take on board. Because number one, it's not good. Yes? So number three is now considering to increase yes, the, the testing that he's going to do. So he's going to spend more time. It's going to increase his sample size because it does not believe, it does not trust number one. Number one, it's got professional skepticism before it even comes, you know, to talk to you. Now, it's now found out that, you know, it cannot trust the system. Yes, because if I apply the first test, the compliance test, the walkthrough test, 
then it means now that auditor is now going to be looking at you. Yes, he's smiling to you still. Yes, that's what we ask. Yeah. Uh, well, that, that's why before in those olden days, when the auditor is in that situation, he can never smile to you. No, but when he's coming, he cannot even smile. And then now you got him for him not to smile more because the system is not good. Yes, you're going to do more tests. Oh my goodness. Well, we're all human beings. Yeah, you're going to feel, well, hold on. What is happening here? This should catch. What's the problem with Shukesh? What's the problem with Noah? Yes? Uh, Miriam, what have you been doing? You know? Inside him, you know, is judging you. Yeah? Now he wants to now do more. And you don't want to be, you don't want to allow the auditor to be in that frame of mind. I'm telling you guys. And that's why I'm saying to you guys, you know, uh, to all of us, stage number one at all times, we got to focus on stage number one. Yeah? If we do stage number one, the auditor, you know, uh, I know he's still going to have professional skepticism, but you know what? It will afford to smile to us, you know, and then it will, it, it will, it will come down. Yeah, he's a human being himself. I know, you know, I'm talking this light-hearted, but really, that is what happened because uh, we are all human beings. Yeah, even though we are doing our audit remotely, we got artificial intelligence that is helping us to do our audit, but we still, you know, flesh and blood, human beings, you know, talk. Talking to human beings, are you with me? Yes, and um, and sometimes you know the things that make us you know you know think or do things in a, in a, in a certain way you know you know uh, God God help us, yeah. So don't forget that. But you as a professional, if you evolve in stage number one, I'm saying to you, please make sure you know that's what we're talking about here. Yeah, you got all these systems working, and they're working properly. Yes. They are integrated to capture data, record that data, analyze that data, reconcile that data. The background information, yeah, you have to be on top of it because when the auditor is talking to you, yeah, he's judging you. That auditor is talking to Shukesh, he's judging you, yes? Do you know, you know, the difference between cash accounting and accruals accounting? Do you know? You know, um, if sub, the, the control account, if it doesn't balance, you know, uh, why it's not balanced? Do you know, you know, uh, when you do a bank reconciliation that, you know, in, in a situation like this, you know, you need to make sure that, you know, the bank statement is reconciled to the reconciliation balance. And then if there's any, you know, unreconciled transaction, yeah, you need to investigate. Do you know that, you know, your debtors, yeah, you need to have a breakdown and you need to follow up those debtors. Yes. Do you know your creditors? Yeah. When you have creditors there, yeah, you need to follow up with that creditor to say, well, hold on. Yeah. Um, we need to pay this, these people. Otherwise, you know, um, they're going to chase us. You know, did you know, you know, uh, well, if the organization has got cash flow issue in the next six months, you are able to identify it. And then that's been discussed. It's talking to you. Yeah. And it's judging you by your answers. Yeah. Because we are human beings. Yeah? So that's why, number one, I'm saying, guys, particularly if we are in a situation where we are being audited, yes? Because we've got clients where, you know, uh, we are providing, yes, the finance function. And then we got other auditors coming to auditors. Okay. We need to bear that in mind. Because they'll be asking those questions. They'll be talking to us. They'll be, you know, oh, want to know, you know. And if we are able you know, to answer, you know, professionally, you know, and then demonstrate that by the work that we've done, we're going to make that guy feel, you know, a little bit at ease. Yes? Yes? Remember that, guys. But if we're not able to do it, then, you know what, the opposite is going to happen. Yeah? Even though you have professional skepticism in his mind, still, yeah, but we want to, we don't want to give him more reason to add to that professional skepticism. And the only way we could do that is to make sure that we're on top of our systems. Yeah, the management information system. Yes, if we're involved in doing that. I will stop this far for today. Yes. Uh this is one of our favorite subjects here at Morico. Yes. Uh as you know, we are audit farm. So we need to, yes, 
to be on top of this. And uh, and for me, I just love talking about the subject matter. Yes, in so many different ways. But guys, yeah, even though I'm talking from an origin perspective, yes, yeah, you can see stage number one. Yes, uh, my focus is, and I want to leave that with you guys. Stage number one. Yes, and stage number one there. One of the key things I'm saying there is the background information. I want to leave with you guys. Yeah, uh, take it on. Yes. Uh, try and do a financial procedure manual. Try and do one yourself. Yeah, and until you do one, I'm telling you guys, you know, you got still gap. You know, uh, that you carrying that gap. You know, you carrying that stuff with you. It's a baggage. Yeah, try and drop that baggage down by doing one profession by doing one financial procedure manual. Do it yourself. You understand? And uh, if you've never done budget, do one. Yes. And uh, the background information, that template that we got, complete it, guys. Yeah? You'll find out that, you know, you'll be able to feel, you know, a little bit comfortable. Because if, you, if you've not done it, yes, uh, and every day I'm talking to you guys about this, you know, somewhere in your conscience there, you're carrying a load, you know, a baggage. Because you know you've not done it. Yes? And more like talking to you about it, you know, and it's the right thing to do. Yeah? And you've not done it, so that conflict exists. It's too heavy. So I'm appealing to everyone. Yes. Please, please. Yeah. In stage number one, background information. Complete it. Yeah. Complete it. And if you need me to, you know, to talk about it or you got issues that you want to clarify, I'm happy to talk about it. Yeah. But you can see why. Yes. Uh, I'm emphasizing, overemphasizing it. Yeah. Think about it. Number five, the auditor is standing there, number five. It turns back, the first thing it's looking at, is looking at stage number one. Yeah? Okay. Paint that picture, guys. And hold that picture. Yeah? All right. Thank you very much. Maybe one or two questions, if you got. I know time is gone so quickly. Uh, but I can take one or two questions, if there's any question. Um, thank you, Sepede. Can you just um, stop sharing, please? Thank you. Any questions, guys? Uh, let me see. There's um, some stuff on the in the chat. No. Yes. I think I have a question. Yes, Miriam. Um, will it be okay to include the the major customers or the major supplier, mm -hmm. okay, or the major source of funding? And um, if it's um, a charity, um, in, in the background information. Good question. But before I answer that question, you know, I just want to take this opportunity to um, to spotlight Miriam. Yeah, Miriam is um, uh, for you guys who don't know, is um, our uh, the person that is carrying this Moeku flag down in Ghana. Yes, as you know, we got Moeku Ghana. Uh, we've got a big agenda, you know, we want to take more every African country, yes, okay, so if you are any country, you know, where you belong and you, you think, well, you know, you want to be a part of this, yeah, let us know, speak to Miriam or myself, yeah, but um, I just want to spotlight that, and um, there's an article, you know, that Miriam, you know, as um, she was interviewed recently, uh, one of those powerful magazines down there, so please just follow and like, you know, and um, we want you guys to be part of it as well, yeah, because we're reaching out and we want to go to every African country, every African country, you know, to to have what we got in Ghana, what to replicate it, yes, and um, uh, so talk to Miriam or talk to me if you are really, really interested, yeah, uh, to do this. So thank you, Miriam, uh, for holding the fort down there. Now, come to your question. Very good question. Um, the short answer is yes. Yes. Because the background information, guys, you know, uh, it has to, um, I don't want to use the word, you know, like a kitchen sink where everything goes in. But kitchen sink sometimes got this negative connotation. You know what I mean? It, that, you know, everything that is not good going in there. Yeah. But you know what I mean? It's everything that you know about the client. Yeah. Needs to go into the background information. Because the thing is, you know, think about it, you know, um, um, you mentioned about funding, yes, and their major customers. 
Think about it. Yes, if you don't know that they are major customers, yes, how would you be able to um, uh, to serve them? Yeah, because remember, we are in the finance function. Yes, um, what we are doing here, we're providing a service. Yes, and those guys, where money is coming from, funders, you say major customers, major funders, there's a relationship yeah, that exists. And we need to understand that relationship. And here, we believe in Morocco, yeah, any you know, um, um, uh, situation like that, where money is coming from yeah, to the business, in this case, the money is coming from the funder, it's coming from the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the customers. What do we need to do? The finance function needs to serve. You understand? It needs to serve. Because wherever money is coming from, Yes, you've got to prioritize that. You've got to really pay attention to it. Because if the money does not come into the business, yeah, that money would not be available to go out. Are you with me? So for the fact that you say major customers, I'm even saying to all customers, because this is where the money is coming from to come to the business. Yes, and we all know how powerful cash is. They say cash is the lifeblood of a business. So if money is not there, if the blood yeah, is not, it's not there, well, sorry, we've got a problem. Yes? So the first thing that we want to do is to make sure that we put it in the background information. Because we need to know. We need to identify that. And why do you want to? Because when it comes to the chart of accounts, where we are designing all these customers and suppliers, Yes, we are now going to now, you know, highlight, you know, all those major customers. We need to treat them specially. Yes, well, somebody was bringing more money into the business. Well, no, sorry, you're going to treat them, you know, with um, a special way. Yes, special treatment. Yeah, and you cannot mix that. Yes, uh, I'm not saying that you're going to openly, you know, uh, neglect the one that's not bringing much money. No, no, it's not fair. But what I'm saying is, but for you to say a major customer, well, you're gonna put some more. It, it, it comes with it comes with importance, yeah. So the background information need to be able to spell that. So when somebody is looking at it, you know, uh, it, it, as you look at the background information, you go down to the activities, yes. Then you say, oh, the major customers, yes. Oh, major funders are this. And guess what? When the auditor comes in. Yeah, and the auditor is now trying to complete the, the permanent file. It's asking you for the financial procedure manual. Remember, even in the financial procedure manual, that major customer suppliers, they should be in there, in the financial procedure manual. Because what he's saying for the auditor, remember, he needs to gather enough evidence to be able to plan. Yes, okay? And audit is always risk-based, yes? It's identifying where risks lie or exist and it's trying to do some audit work to reduce or mitigate those risks. That's simply what audit is about. Okay. So you now told the auditor that we've got major customers, yes, uh, from your background information. The auditor is going to be, oh, okay, that's nice, good, yes. So you're giving me uh, important information here yeah. to help him to plan. Because when he's planning, he's now going to focus on those major customers. Are you with me? Yes? Oh, major customer is giving big money, so that means I need to do more testing. I need to to uh, to do more uh, focus on it. So it's so important. But it's not only for the external auditors, but for internal purposes. Everybody that is in within the organization need to know that the major customers that are bringing money in, we need to treat them special. Yes? What I mean, you, I, I always make the joke, you know, to send tea and coffee and say hello or whatever it is, you know. You've got to treat them because, you know, they are the ones that are bringing the key money into the business, yeah, and the money that comes in is the lifeblood of the business. If money is not coming in, the business is going to suffocate. However good that business is, if we don't have customers bringing money in, if we don't have funders bringing money in, it doesn't matter however good your mission or your mission or purpose is, Yes, you're going to choke. Yes, because the blood is not flowing. Yes, it's a live blood. So when you hear this expression, live blood, yeah, cash, 
where is cash coming from? It's coming from customers. Well, we've got a five, um, what you call it now, five point action, yeah, with my colleagues, you know. So when I say five points, you know, they'll go to look at me and say, oh, I know what he talks about, you know, because we got to five points, yes, um, in the stage of money mindset. One day, you know, at some point, we, we, we're designing some uh, money mindset because accountants, we're not good at money, yes. We are good at managing other people's money, but not our own money, yes. So uh, it's the mindset that we have about money. We just think that money will just come in, you know, just like that, you know, uh, because we're doing our job, you know. No, sorry, it doesn't work like that. Yes. So that mindset. So what I'm saying is, this is another area. Uh, you cannot just allow, you know, uh, when you say major customers, yeah, not to have a certain way of dealing with them. Your major customers, your major customers, they are major for a reason. Yes. So you need to flag it on your background information, you know, and so that everybody knows. Yeah. Uh, so important. But I'm not saying uh, to the extent that you forget about, about those who are not major. Uh, every customer, you know, need to be highlighted. Yes. In the background information. Yeah. Because in the chart of account, yeah, in the accounting system, you need to create every customer yeah, within your accounting system. And all those customers within the accounting system, guys, it's not just the name. I go into QuickBooks or Zero, I just see the name of the customer, yeah, in the in the QuickBooks or Zero, and all the other detail about the customer is not there. Yeah, I don't know if you guys follow me. Yes, when you go into QuickBooks, and you say that customer is a customer, yeah, it means that it's not only the name that should be in there. You should have the address of that customer. You should have the, the telephone number you know, of that customer. You should have the, the main contact in that customer. You should have some the email address of that customer. Are you with me? There's so much information. The credit limit for that customer, it should be in there. If it's not there, sorry guys. Yeah, again, the system is not fit for purpose. Are you with me? Yeah. So those who are involved in stage number one, yes, I'm drawing your attention to it. Particularly you guys who are coming in now, you understand, coming into the industry, you understand? Uh, it's the name of your customer is just not sufficient. Yeah, you have to have full details of that customer. Because you get now, just imagine, you know, if you just put the name and no email address, you know, or the address of the customer, no telephone number to contact the customer, because sometimes you need to contact them by telephone or by email, or when you send the invoice to them, you know, you want to send them by email, yes? Uh, so you've got to have full information about the customers yeah, in your accounting system, not just the name. The same applies for the suppliers, yes? So guys, so important, but yes, it should be yeah, in the background information. So, so important, guys, yeah? Okay, one more question before we go. One more question. Anybody? Next question. And uh, if there's no further question, I want to thank you all. But this question that me and ask me, guys, you know, I just want to leave you guys with this, guys, yeah? Uh, I know some guys are involved in the posting right now, yeah? I know as I'm talking, you know, um, some of you, yeah, with the conscience, because we all have conscience, yes? Um, and I want to I want to play to that, you know, and also want to appeal to you guys. If you are involved in posting, yes, in stage number one, please, guys, yes, please, I'm asking you, please, close that gap. If you know you're not doing it, because you, right now you know you're not doing it. You know you're not doing it. You know, you're looking at bank statement. You're looking at figures in the bank statement. You're posting it, and you don't you don't even check where the money is coming from. Well, if you got the name of the customer there, you know that you're not putting the details. You're not you're not going into the system. Yes, edit that customer, and then put all the information in QuickBooks or Zero. You know that now. I'm saying to you, please, guys. Yeah, don't just ignore me. Yeah. Oh, more like just talking. Oh, well, you know, yeah, this my way. Please, guys, don't.
go and do it. Yes, please go and do it. Because what you're doing there is, that is where the mindset comes again. You are closing your own gap. That's a gap that you have. I'm telling you, you know, and that gap will follow you, you know, wherever you go. I'm telling you guys, it will follow you. Yes. Uh, so close it now. I'm appealing to you, close it. Yes. Okay, it might take time. But, you know, it's a habit that you are now trying to form, a new habit. When you see things like that, don't just allow it. Don't just let go. Complete it. Yeah, take the responsibility to complete it. Ownership to complete it. And the responsibility to complete it. I'm telling you, you'll feel good about yourself. You will really feel good about yourself. You know that, you know what? I'm doing justice. Yeah? Get that conflict out of your head. Because it's a lot of conflict. I'm telling you guys. Yeah? Uh, I myself, I was there at one point. Yeah? So I'm appealing to you guys. Yeah? Don't just take this lightly. Oh, more lies talking. Oh, well... You know, I'll do my own bit. You see it, you don't, or no. Yeah? Uh, we now have this um, expression. You know, uh, if you guys are in the UK, you know, you go to public places, you know, you will hear, you know, this announcement. You see it, say it, and sort it. Yes? Yes, if you see it, don't hold it to yourself. You say it. Yeah, and if you say it, then, you know, you'll be sorted. you get help. So, I'm using that, you know, bow with that, you know, and then please, you know, I'm appealing to you guys. See it. Yes. You say it. Go and do it. Yes. And then it will be sorted out. Yes. So when you see it, don't just ignore it. Yeah. So now if you're posting, just go and look for the for the customers. Yeah. See if those customers are updated. The details are there. Those suppliers. Yeah, go and check to see if those suppliers are there. Check your chart of accounts. Yes. Uh, make sure, you know, well, yes, uh, you got the revenue, you got the, the cost of sales, you got the overhead. Yes. Yeah. Or if in a charity, make sure you got the income, you, know, you got the direct cost, and then you got the support costs or overheads. Yeah. There are different codes. Export the chart of accounts, review them. Yeah. And make your comments. I'm appealing to you guys, yes? Yeah? You are forming new habits. Yeah? And that habit, I'm telling you, it's going to take you a long, long, long way. Yeah? And remember, I always talk to you guys about the law of compensation. Yes? The law of compensation, it says, yeah, the amount of money that you make, or the amount of, if it's fame, you know, or recognition, you understand? It depends on three things. Number one, yeah, the need for what you do. The need for what you do. Remember, we are accountants, yes? And this is the, one of the best professions that you guys we've decided to come for, yes? And particularly you guys who are coming in. If you're not sure, I'm telling you, yes, I want to make it clear to you, if you're not sure uh, whether accounting is one of those, you know, uh, professions that are, no, sorry, I'm telling you, uh, make up your mind to be an accountant. I'm telling you, it's one of the best professions out there. Yeah? Okay? The need for what we do exists. Every country needs accountants. Every business out there in every country need accountants. Yes? People, particularly those they call it high net worth, those guys who got lots of money, yeah, somebody like James, you know, uh, Miriam, you know, Ashik, you know, uh, Sepede, they need, they need accountants. Yes? Yeah? Because they've got lots of money. So they need accountants to help them. So the need for what we do exists. You don't have to worry about that. Yeah? Okay? Just make up your mind to become an accountant. Yeah? You get the training. You got the discipline. Come to Morocco Foundation training. You know, that, yeah, you know, you get the accounting mindset, you know, and artificial intelligence. Sorry. You could do everything. Yeah? Okay. Number two. It says your ability to do it. Okay. Do you have what it takes yes, to become a real accountant or a real auditor? Do you have what it takes? Yes. Have you got the ability? Yes. Are you able? Are you willing? Yeah. To stretch yourself at all times, to go the extra mile. Yes. To be able to, you know, to be present. 
to be able to, you know, when you are called upon, you know, to do things, you know, uh, you are there. Yes, that ability, yeah, the skills that you need, yeah, in this environment, digital, you know, environment. Yes, uh, now we're talking about, you know, economical or environmental issues. Those are issues that you need to, to take on board. There's a cost associated with it. You know, read about it. Yes, uh, government legislation. There's a lot of things happening. You're updating yourself. Yeah, it gives you the ability. When you get the ability, yes, the number three, which is you make it difficult to be replaced. Yes, you make it difficult. I'll give you an example here now. If you are very, very good, and then, you know, for example, here, working with me, more light does not recognize you. For example, what do you think is going to happen? More light is going to lose. Because more light is seeing somebody who has got the ability, who can do the job, who can bring in money for more cool, who can serve clients and make clients happy, and then more light is not recognizing that person. You know what? There will be so many people waiting outside waiting for you, yes? There will be so many people, yeah, waiting, yeah, to take you on. Why? Because you got the right mindset. You got the ability. Are you with me to do what many people are able to do? So the law of compensation is always my mind, and I always talk about it, yes? So the critical thing that you want to focus on is your ability, yeah? And this forms part of the ability. But it's not only the doing, but it's the mindset. Yeah, to be able to respect, you know, clients, to be able to be emotionally involved with client business, to know their business in and out. That is part of the ability. Yeah, to be able to see things, you know, from a distance. You know, the moment somebody is talking to you, you, you're able to judge them professionally. Yes, okay, you're going to doubt them, but you know what? You're not going to allow them, you know, to just, you know, just throw things at you. Yes? Okay. You stand your ground. Yeah. Respectfully, though, with love. Yes? No, don't go down there and start, you know, hitting people you know, or saying things to people. No, it's not allowed. But the ability, you know, somebody you are approachable, somebody, you know, the client, you know, the client has to come to you. Yes? When they have issues, they know that you are dependable, you are reliable. Oh, my goodness. You're going to make, if it's money you want to make, you're going to make a lot of money. Seriously, yeah? Uh, if it's just, well, you just want to help other people touch their lives, you would do it, yeah? And uh, because you got something, you know, in your hands, yes? And I believe that spiritually, you know, when you got something in your hands, you can give it. But if you don't have it, you cannot give it. Are you with me? So try and get it, the ability, yeah? So that love compensation is so, so important, guys, yeah? Uh, I hope... You know, um, um, I've shed some light, you know, today. I know we've gone, you know, even half an hour longer. But thank you for your patience. And thank you for just listening to me. Yes. And uh, But please, it's not all about just listening to me. Go and do it. Yeah. Please go and do it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Have you got any, any announcements?